Namaste. Hamesha Kush Rabitya. I am Jirin Dr. Lili Trivedi and this lecture is for students of Jyoti Vidya Peet. And to start with today, this, the lecture is on ecosystem, its structure, components. So let us start. What is ecosystem? As described by Tansley in 1935, Ecosystem is a group of biotic communities of species interacting with one another and with their non-living components exchanging energy and matter. So the ecosystem is an integrated unit consisting of plants, animals and microorganisms. These are the biotic components and climate, physiographic, Adaptive and uh, uh, different characters, those are the abiotic components. So they are linked together and they freely exchange energy and matter from the outside and open ecosystem. Now, what are the characteristics of ecosystem? They vary in size, structure, and composition. However, all the ecosystems are carried or characterized by certain basic structural and functional basic structural and functional features which are common now the structural features is the biotic structure in which the plants animals and microorganisms are present in an ecosystem and the abiotic components in the ecosystem. Now, the organisms in the biotic structure have different nutritional behavior and status, and accordingly, they are known as producers or consumers based on how they get their food. Now, what are producers? They are mainly green plants which can synthesize their food themselves by making use of carbon dioxide present in the air and water and in the presence of sunlight by involving chlorophyll, the green pigment of the leaf. And the process is photosynthesis. They are also known as photoautotrophs. That means they can self make food in the presence of light. Now some microorganisms also can produce organic matter through certain oxidation chemicals in the absence of sunlight. Now, what are these organisms known? Chemoautotrophs. Now, let me tell you an example. In the ocean depth, where there is no sunlight, sulfur bacteria makes use of the heat, which is generated by the radioactive elements of the earth core, and it generates, uh, it makes food. Now, this uh, dissolve, heat is used to uh, convert dissolved hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide into organic compound. So you see we have producers. Now let us come to consumers. What are consumers? All organisms which get their organic food by feeding upon other organisms are called consumers. So they can be of how many types? Herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Now what are herbivores? And we have another type. After omnivore we have detrivore. Now let us start with herbivores. They are plant eaters. They feed directly on the producers and hence we call them primary consumers. So what are the examples? Rabbit, insects and man. The second is carnivores. They feed on other consumers. They, if they feed on herbivores, they are called secondary consumer. And if they feed on other carnivores, they are called tertiary carnivore consumer. Now, example of secondary consumer are frog. And snake is the example of tertiary carnivore consumer. Because what happens? The frog feeds on insects and the snake feeds on the frog. 
Now we come to omnivores. What are omnivores? They feed both on plant and animal. For example, fox, rat, bird, and even human beings. After this, we have detrivores. Detrivores are also called saprotrophs. They feed on dead organic matter and waste of living beings. The partially decomposed matter like ants, beetles, earthworms, etc. Then after we have produ producer, consumer and the last is decomposer. What is decomposer? They derive nutrition by breaking down the complex organic molecules to simple organic molecules and ultimately into inorganic nutrients. Now we have various bacteria and fungi in the decomposers and they are present in all ecosystem. Now in some, it is like example in the forest and also in the deep ocean. So this is the biotic structure of an ecosystem. Now abiotic structure, we have already discussed also some of our so it consumes, it consists of the physical and com chemical components of the abiotic structure. So it includes the climatic factors, the adaptive factors, the geographic factors, the nutrients. So we have divided it into physical factors, which include the sunlight, shade, duration of sun hours, annual rainfall, soil type, soil water etc. Wind latitude. These are the physical factors which influence the system. So since they are affecting the ecosystem, they are also affecting to the climate and so we are having the climate included in the physical factors. So we can see the striking difference in according to the temperature, rainfall, solar flux, in the desert ecosystem and tropical ecosystem and tundra ecosystem. Now, and after physical factors, the chemical components are also responsible, like major nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, hydrogen oxide, and sulfur. So they are causing different levels of an ecosystem. For example, salt causes salinity. Salinity and various organic substances also influence the production and the functioning of an ecosystem. So all biotic components of an ecosystem are influenced by abiotic components and the abiotic components are influenced by the biotic components. And this is through energy flow and matter cycling. Now we also have functional attributes. What is functional attributes? So under natural conditions, everything in a systemic way. We receive energy from the sun and pass it through the various biotic components. So this is the flow of energy. Besides energy, we use the water, the minerals, the nutrients. So they are exchanged as the biotic components within themselves and with the abiotic components. So there is a regulation in a very systemic manner and mechanism is there to, to encounter some degree stress. Now functional attributes of an ecosystem include food chain, food web, trophic structure, energy flow, cycling of nutrients, primary and secondary production, and ecosystem development and regulation. So here we will study the few, for example, like the food chain, the food web, and trophic structure. So what is trophic structure? Now the trophic structure is included. So there is a definite level of energy mediated through feeding relationship. And that is known as food chain. The nutrients move along the food chain. The producer and consumers are arranged in an ecosystem in a definite method. And their interaction within a population size is expressed as trophic structure. So each food level is a trophic level and the amount of living matter at trophic 
each trophic level is known as standing biomass. So we have the energy flow nutrients also in this food chain and the food chain consists of different parts which flow in the ecosystem. So this is how the food web is what? It is how the food is inter interconnected like the food chain is interconnected through the food web. Different food chains interact with each other and form the food web. So this is a simple brief idea. I hope students, you are satisfied with my lecture. And if you have any query or comments, do give in the comment box. This session was powered by 2.0 digital version of Jyoti Vidyapeet Women's University. Thank you and Namaste.